Good morning guys. Um, I have been asked to answer a question from one of our lovely clients, Cheryl. Um, now she's asked it's a two part question. Um, as the weather is starting to warm up now, we do as veterinarians and as pet owners start to get a little worried about snakes coming out. Um, so Cheryl has asked, um, what is the initial first aid of a snake bite in a dog or cat? And the second part is what treatment is given by a vet? So essentially, a lot of snake bites that we see in the clinic, people have seen their pet or know that their pet has been bitten by a snake. Uh, a lot of the time in dogs in particular, they get very excited if they see a snake. Um, so they might squeal or there might be a bit of a, a ruckus heard. Uh, and then if they've been, been bitten, quite often they will collapse uh, periodically and then get up again. In cats, it tends to be a lot harder to know based on history if they've been bitten by a snake. I guess because often they're, you know, they sort of might be out by themselves and not actually being monitored. Um, but they might come home with a snake, a dead snake left by the back door. Um, or quite often you might notice uh, if they've been bitten a few hours previously that they might be generally just a little bit weak and seem a little bit out of it. Um, so in, essentially, if you've seen your dog or cat or know that they've been bitten by a snake. The most important thing to do is call the vet and get them to the vet straight away. Uh, there's no, um, no point in waiting around, wasting time. Um, sometimes uh, some animals might be um, collapsed or, or sort of be affected by the venom quite quickly. Um, and other animals can actually take sometimes hours for them to show any signs at all. Um, but the most important thing is time. Uh, getting them to the vet as quickly as possible means that you're gonna have the best prognosis um, in order you know, to, to save them. Um, the two main types of snakes that we see down here in Bustleton or in WA in general are tiger snakes um, and brown snakes or dugites. Now, these two snakes are extremely venomous. Um, they do affect animals a little bit differently, but for the most part, they have toxins that essentially cause weakness of the muscles. They're called neurotoxins. Um, they also have uh, some components of their venom that can cause problems with clotting and also actually break down red blood cells. Um, and then they also affect the muscle cells themselves. So breaking down the muscle cells. So as I said previously, the most common thing we see early on is weakness, collapse, um, and that can range from happening within a few minutes to a few hours. So when we see a patient in here that we think has been bitten by a snake, what we do really depends on what state they present in. So hopefully uh, they present to us shortly after it's occurred and they're not too clinically unstable. Um, and if that's the case, then what we do is we run some blood work on them and we look at a couple of different parameters to confirm our diagnosis. So the two parameters we look at um, are a muscle enzyme and often we look at their clotting times as well because both of those will be quite high um, if they've been bitten by a snake. Um, one of the things that I've had people bring in with them um, if their pet has been bitten by a snake is the snake itself. Um, please don't do that. <laughs> um, it is very useful to know what sort of snake your pet has been bitten by because it does change how we treat them a, a little bit. Um, if you've got the snake at home and it's dead, um, your pet killed it, then very, very carefully what you can do is flip it onto its back and take a picture of its underside. Um, bear in mind, if the snake is dead, it is still potentially venomous. It can still uh, bite you or if you, um, you know, happen to scratch yourself on one of its fangs, that can still uh, envenomate you. So just be very, very careful um, and never try and kill a snake. Um, if it's in your backyard or you know, if it's an immediate threat to your family, call one of the amazing reptile handlers we have down here in the southwest. So once we've confirmed a diagnosis that your pet's been bitten by a snake, um, the next few things that we'll do, uh, again, depend on what they're looking like clinically, but we'll often get them set up on a drip. Um, so get some fluids into them straight away. Sometimes they might be in a bit of shock. Uh, and as quickly as possible, we'll get some anti-venom into them. Now, this is where it is important to know 
what sort of snake has bitten your pet. However, we do have multivalent um, or combinant antivenoms. So if we're not sure if it's a black snake or a brown snake, then we use the, the combination antivenom. Now, the reason I guess I, I say that time is really important in bringing your pet in is because antivenoms don't actually uh, prevent or reverse the signs of the snake envenomation. Um, they just bind toxins so that those clinical signs can't go any further. So if your pet presents to us or if you come home and it's been a few hours and your pet is really unwell, um, so it can't stand, um, is having difficulty breathing, they might have you know, vomited quite a lot, um, then that's a real dire emergency um, and we still treat them the same, we still give them anti-venom, however they need really intensive supportive care because we can't reverse the signs that are there. Um, essentially, prognosis really depends on the patient, how long it's been since they have been um, attacked by a snake, um, how much venom they've gotten, how big they are, how excited they were, um, the more excited that they are, the quicker the venom spreads throughout the body. Um, so it's really multifactorial uh, and it, you know, it varies from case to case. Um, but for the most part, with early presentation, um, we have a very, very good prognosis uh, and ability to treat snake bite patients. I guess at the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. So using your smarts, if, you're, if the sun's out, particularly this time of year, uh, spring is the most common time of year we see snake bites. Not in summer, it's often when the snakes are just starting to warm up. Um, but they might not quite be quick enough to move away from you if they hear you or feel you coming. Um, so prevention, don't go walking in long grass, try and keep your dog on lead, um, particularly down, we've got lots of waterways here in Bustleton, so down by the drains or by the, the nature reserves. Just be very, very smart um, about where you walk your dog um, and what time of day you might let your cat out as well if they are an outside cat. Um, so I hope, Cheryl, that that has answered a few questions for you. Um, if there is anything I haven't covered, you're more than welcome to, to contact us. Um, and I guess the key points are if your pet has been bitten by a snake, time is everything. Call the vet or get down to the vet straight away. Um, and from there, they will take you through everything that needs to be done. All right, well, hopefully we don't have to deal with any of, uh, any of your patients with that sort of scenario coming up this springtime. Um, I hope you'll enjoy the warmer weather um, and take care. Thanks.